Welcome biologists. In this session, we're going to look at natural clones and artificial clones. So natural clones can be found in nature, such as in starfish, regenerating limbs, asexual reproduction of flatworms, where they can make an identical copy of themselves, and also in hydra, which can produce clones on the side of their body, again, through asexual reproduction. So all this is through mitosis and asexual reproduction. We can also have natural cloning within humans as well, which is genetically identical twins. Um, so this is to do with the same egg that's fertilized with the same sperm and the egg will split either in day one to three to form, all of them form identical twins, but depending upon what day it separates, depends upon if they're gonna be sharing a placenta or be sharing a sac, as you can see there. So that's the cloning bit, the natural cloning. We're now going to look at artificial clones. So the first thing we need to know about is artificial twinning. So artificial twinning, this is when we have a particular organism that has a desired trait. So for example, in cattle, that might be a, a good milk yield or it might be um, a high um, proportion of muscle uh, or meat on an individual. Um, so what you would do um, is you would take an animal with a desired trait, such as a good milk yield, and this particular cow would be given um, hormone treatment to release a lot more eggs. As you can see in this image here, I've got a lot of eggs. Those eggs are then fertilized or through um, artificial insemination, they're fertilized in the individual. And then all of the eggs are flushed out of that individual. What then happens is uh, because they have been fertilized, we're going to get totipotent blastocysts forming. And these can be split into several smaller zygotes. So you're kind of inducing twinning here. Um, and this is done in vitro, it's done in a petri dish. So once we have all of these um, blastocysts that have been split, so we've got twins of the same from the same egg, they're then implanted into surrogate mums. So as you can see here, all of these four mums here will have cells from this cluster here. So all of these individuals here will be cloned of clones of that birth birth cluster, if you like. So this cluster here is one of the totipotent blastocysts, which has been split and then put into different surrogate mums. So all these individuals here will be genetically identical because they come from the same cluster, that totipotent blastocyst, which can be split. We also have something known as somatic cell nuclear transfer that we need to be aware of. So what we would do here is we would take the nucleus from an individual now this individual again might be chosen for a certain trait such as milk yield or uh, fur quality or um meat uh, whatever it is you've chosen um you would then take the nucleus from a somatic cell somatic cell is an adult cell so you take the take the nuclei from that particular cell and isolate it and then what you do is you take a egg cell usually from um, another um, organism of the same species and you would remove the nuclei of that egg. We now have an empty ovum. Now don't forget within here I'll still have some genetic information because I'll have mitochondria and mitochondria contain genetic information. So I'll still have mitochondrial DNA from this mother. However, the majority of the DNA is going to be from this particular mother that has the um, characteristic that you've identified that you want to clone. So what you do is you put this nuclei into the enucleated egg and you provide a mild electric shock to invoke and promote mitosis. Therefore what I'd get is a um, cell division within my egg which would form a totipotent blastocyst. I'd then implant that into a surrogate mother. Now this surrogate mother normally has no genetic information of any relation to the offspring. However, this offspring here will be a genetic clone of sheep one, but it will contain genetic information of mitochondrial DNA from sheep two. But the main idea here is it'll be a genetically identical to sheep one. So that's the information there that we need on somatic cell nuclear transfer. Um, arguments for and against. So arguments for will have desirable characteristics, which are always going to be passed on to the clones. It's going to be faster and you can avoid mating risks. Um, you can also get for arguments against. It can be expensive. There's um, no genetic variability. More susceptible to disease because you're limiting that genetic biodiversity. And they can have shorter lifespans and success rate can be poor. Uh, and that's about it, guys. Everything you need to know there on 